Picture this. South America and Africa, two colossal land masses staring at each other across the vast Atlantic, their coastlines teasingly similar, like jagged puzzle pieces ripped apart. It's no coincidence. They were once joined, locked in an ancient embrace, part of a supercontinent called Pangaea. But around 130 million years ago, South America said, we're done, and began its slow, dramatic drift away. Today, it's 1,800 miles from Africa, inching ever closer to the Pacific Ocean, driven by forces so immense they boggle the mind. Every year, this continent creeps westward, a silent, unstoppable journey fueled by the Earth's fiery core. This isn't just a geological curiosity. It's a jaw-dropping saga of a planet alive, restless, and constantly reshaping itself. Tectonic plates, those massive slabs beneath our feet, are the culprits, grinding and shifting in a dance so slow it's invisible to us. Yet, their movements have sculpted the world we know, and they're nowhere near done. South America's voyage is just one chapter in a story that could end in cataclysmic collisions, new species, and continents reborn. Buckle up. This is Earth's most shocking untold epic. Let's dive deeper. Why is South America on the move? Blame the tectonic plates, those gargantuan puzzle pieces that make up Earth's crust. They're not static. They're sliding, colliding, and diving under one another, powered by the planet's molten heart. Deep beneath the oceans, cracks in the crust, ooze magma, scorching liquid rock that rises, cools and hardens into new crust. This process, happening along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, an underwater mountain range slicing through the Atlantic, is like a conveyor belt. As fresh crust forms, it shoves the older crust aside, pushing the continents riding atop these plates. South America, perched on its namesake plate, is being nudged westward toward the Pacific at a rate of a few centimeters per year. It's slow, sure, but over millions of years. Those centimeters add up to thousands of miles. Meanwhile, on South America's western edge, the Nazca plate, denser and heavier, is bulldozing eastward, sliding beneath the South American plate in a process called subduction. This collision, happening at about three inches per year, isn't just moving the continent, it's birthing the Andes' breathtaking volcanoes and fueling earthquakes that remind us how alive our planet is. But why isn't Africa tagging along? After all, it's right across the Atlantic, once cozy with South America. Here's the twist. Africa's got its own drama. It sits on the African plate, which is also being pushed by the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, but in the opposite direction. Think of the ridge as a wedge, driving these former besties apart. Africa's not just drifting east, though. It's tearing itself apart. The East African Rift, a massive fracture on land, is splitting the continent like a cosmic zipper. This rift pulls Africa in multiple directions, creating a chaotic tug of war that South America never had to endure. Lava bubbles up, new crust forms, and parts of East Africa might one day break off to form a new continent. It's a slow motion spectacle, a continent literally cracking under pressure, and it's why Africa's path diverges so wildly from South America's. Now let's fast forward, way forward. What's South America's endgame? Scientists have spun some mind-blowing theories, each more dramatic than the last. First, South America could break ties with North America. Both continents are drifting west, but South America's moving faster, like a sibling outpacing the other in a race. North America's plate chugs along at about one inch per year, while South America's 
zipping at a slightly brisker pace. Over hundreds of millions of years, this speed difference could tear the Americas apart, widening the Atlantic and shrinking the Pacific. The Isthmus of Panama, that narrow bridge linking the two, might not survive the strain. Imagine a future where North and South America are estranged, separated by a vast new sea. It's a tectonic breakup for the ages. Then there's the marine life angle, and it's a game changer. The Americas currently act as a massive barrier between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, forcing sea creatures to evolve separately. Atlantic green sea turtles, for instance, are larger and lighter than their darker, smaller Pacific cousins. But if the Americas drift apart or new waterways form, these populations could mingle. Picture turtles, fish and whales exploring new migration routes, invading each other's territories and sparking fierce competition. Some species might thrive, blending into hybrids or birthing entirely new ones. Others could face extinction, outcompeted by newcomers. The oceans would become a wild, unpredictable melting pot, reshaping marine ecosystems in ways we can barely fathom. Its evolution on steroids and the ripple effects would be staggering. But here's the real kicker. South America and Africa might reunite. Yes, you read that right. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is currently widening the Atlantic by creating new seafloor. But scientists predict this could stall in about 125 million years. When it does, the ocean floor might start sinking beneath the continents, a process called subduction. The Atlantic would shrink, pulling South America and Africa back together like long-lost lovers. Brazil could cozy up to Nigeria, Uruguay to Angola, Argentina to South Africa. This collision would be no gentle embrace, though. It'd spawn earthquakes, volcanoes, and towering mountain ranges, transforming border regions into seismic hotspots. The eastern U.S., now home to the serene Appalachians, could resemble the volatile Cascades, with lava spewing peaks and ash-choked skies. This new supercontinent, dubbed Amasia or Pangaea Ultima in some models, would dwarf Asia, becoming Earth's largest landmass. Its sheer scale would rewrite geography, climate, and human history. Imagine the implications of this supercontinent. Travel would explode, hopping from Brazil to Nigeria by train or car, no planes needed, could revolutionize tourism. Trade would boom too. South America's agricultural juggernaut, think soybeans, beef, cocoa, and bananas, would merge with Africa's textile and raw material exports, add their shared petroleum wealth with powerhouses like Brazil, Venezuela, Nigeria, and Algeria, and you've got an economic bloc that could dominate global markets. This union would wield unprecedented clout, reshaping trade routes and alliances. But it's not just humans who'd feel the impact. Wildlife would face a radical shakeup. Picture capybaras dodging Nile crocodiles or jaguars eyeing zebras across savannas. New predators, competitors, and parasites could destabilize ecosystems, sparking a biological free-for-all. Some species might adapt, others vanish, and the borderlands would take eons to find balance. It's a wild, untamed vision of Earth's future, both thrilling and terrifying. Let's zoom out for a moment this isn't just about South America or Africa. It's about a planet in constant flux. Tectonic plates don't care about human borders or timelines. They've been reshaping Earth for billions of years, splitting supercontinents like Gondwana and Laurasia, then smashing them back together. Each cycle leaves scars. Mountain ranges, like the Himalayas, born from India's collision with Asia, or the Andes, forged by subduction. 
These processes drive climate shifts too. When continents drift, ocean currents change, altering rainfall and temperatures. The breakup of Pangaea, for instance, created wetter climates that fueled dinosaur dominance. Today's drift could trigger similar upheavals, reshaping where humans can live and farm. It's a humbling reminder. We're passengers on a restless planet, and its movements dwarf our fleeting existence. Back to South America's journey. Its westward drift isn't just a quirk, it's a window into Earth's inner workings. The planet's core, a searing ball of iron and nickel, generates heat that drives convection currents in the mantle. These currents push tectonic plates, like rafts on a simmering sea. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where new crust is born, is one hotspot. Subduction zones, like the one off South America's coast, are another. Together, they keep Earth's surface in perpetual motion. This isn't abstract science. It's why Chile trembles with earthquakes, why Ecuador's volcanoes erupt, why the Andes soar. These are the pulse points of a living planet and South America's front row seat to the action. What's wilder is how this movement reshapes not just land, but life itself. When continents drift, they carry ecosystems along, stranding species or forcing them to adapt. South America's isolation after splitting from Africa birthed unique creatures like sloths, anteaters, and piranhas. But its collision with North America via the Panama Land Bridge sparked a great American interchange. Animals migrated, saber-toothed cats south, armadillos north, triggering extinctions and new evolutionary paths. Future drifts could ignite similar dramas. If South America merges with Africa, jaguars might clash with lions or tapirs with rhinos. The resulting evolutionary arms race could spawn creatures we can't even imagine. It's nature's ultimate reality show, and we're not invited to the finale. Let's talk numbers, because they're staggering. South America's plate moves about 1.5 inches per year, faster than your fingernails grow. Over 10 million years, that's 150 miles. Over 100 million, 1,500 miles. The Nazca plate subduction adds another three inches annually, amplifying the push. These increments seem tiny, but they've already shifted South America 1,800 miles from Africa since Pangaea's breakup. Looking ahead, models suggest the continent could center itself in the Pacific in 200 million years, assuming no wildcard events. But Earth loves surprises. A new rift, a stalled ridge, or a sudden subduction shift could rewrite the script. Scientists use supercomputers to model these futures, but even they admit uncertainty. Earth's too complex, too chaotic for perfect predictions. Now let's get real about the human stakes. Continental drift isn't just a future concern, it's shaping lives now. Subduction along South America's coast triggers earthquakes that devastate cities, like Chile's 2010 quake, which killed over 500 people. Volcanoes, born from the same forces, threaten communities, but also enrich soils, making places like Ecuador's highlands agricultural gold mines. If South America and Africa merge, border regions could become uninhabitable riddled with quakes and eruptions. But they'd also gain fertile lands from new mountain ranges, boosting farming. Trade routes would shift too. Imagine ships bypassing a shrunken Atlantic for new Pacific hubs. Entire economies could rise or fall based on where the continents settle. It's a high stakes game and humanity's just a player, not the referee. Let's pivot to the cultural angle, because a supercontinent would rewrite human connections. South America and Africa share deep historical ties. 
Think of the African diaspora in Brazil, shaping samba, capoeira, and Afro-Brazilian religions. A physical reunion could amplify these bonds, fostering new cultural exchanges. Imagine festivals, blending Yoruba, drumming with Andean flutes, or cuisines merging fufu with ceviche. But it could also spark tension. New borders might ignite disputes over resources like oil or fresh water. History shows humans don't always share nicely. Look at colonial scrambles for African and South American riches. A supercontinent could be a utopia of collaboration or a battleground of greed. Which path we'd take is anyone's guess. Zooming out again, this saga underscores Earth's fragility and resilience. Our planet's been through asteroid strikes, ice ages, and mass extinctions, yet life persists. Continental drift, though slow, is a force of renewal. It builds mountains, opens oceans, and sparks evolution. But it also reminds us of our limits. No empire, no city, no human achievement can outlast Earth's tectonic whims. The Andes, now towering, will erode to dust. The Atlantic, vast today, may vanish. This perspective humbles us, but also inspires. If Earth can endure billions of years of upheaval, maybe we can tackle our own challenges, climate change, inequality, division, with the same tenacity. Let's circle back to South America's journey, because it's not just geology, it's a metaphor. This continent, drifting alone yet shaped by global forces, mirrors our own lives. Small moves, big impacts, uncertain futures. Its volcanoes, quakes and creeping plates remind us change is constant, often violent, but also creative. The Andes rose from destruction, new species emerged from isolation. Maybe we too can find growth in chaos. South America's story isn't just Earth's. It's ours, a call to adapt, endure, and dream of what's next. So, where does this leave us? South America's still drifting, Africa's still splitting, and the planet's still churning. In 100 million years, our descendants, if they exist, might walk a supercontinent where Brazil borders Nigeria, where jaguars hunt alongside cheetahs, where new mountains dwarf Everest, or maybe not. Earth's unpredictable, and that's its magic. For now, we can marvel at the forces beneath our feet, shaping a world we'll never see. It's a story of rupture, reunion, and relentless change, a saga too vast for one lifetime, but too gripping to ignore.